Hi everyone. Today we'll be looking at a brief history of the excavations and the early discoveries that were made at Pompeii and Herculaneum. The first excavations at Pompeii and Herculaneum took place in the 1700s. So you can see this isn't something we've been doing for the last 10 or 20 years. Excavations have been taking place over the last 200 years and lots of people have been involved. One of the first people to work there was Rocco D. Acubier. He was a military engineer who was put in charge of operations. He was criticised for what seemed to be a haphazard approach. He wasn't very professional and he was one of the first people there, so he made a lot of mistakes. Carl Weber was uh, the next person who played an important role in the excavation and he was a Swiss engineer. Now you can see in the picture here, this is not actually Carl Weber, this is King Charles III who was the king at the time, but I thought I'd put his picture in there because we don't have a picture of Carl Weber, but he was the king at the time Carl Weber was working. Weber's excavations followed the lines of the streets and he entered the buildings along the streets through their doors. So he had a much more systematic approach. But the most important archaeologist who worked at the site in the 19th century was Giuseppe Fiorelli. He was an Italian archaeologist and he was director of excavations from 1860 to 1875. He was a very important man who made major contributions to the archaeology of Pompeii and he's something who we will study a lot and he's someone that you need to know a lot about. Fiorelli introduced systematic methods of recovering the ruins and recording the details. He made the grid system, which was a very important innovation. And he made the plaster casts, which was also a very important innovation and something that's become very famous in Pompeii. He introduced a method of naming and numbering houses and buildings. Fiorelli divided the town into nine regions or insulae. Each entrance in each block was given a number. In this way, each building could be identified by three numbers. For example, V1326. V means the region, 13 is the block, and 26 is the entrance. And you can see in this picture, this is a map of Pompeii, and you can see how they've divided the different sections. So it makes it quite simple and easy to understand where things are. Fiorelli was also the first archaeologist to excavate houses from the top rather than the bottom or from the sides. He also made the plaster casts. Here is a picture of the, one of the plaster casts which have become very famous from Pompeii. We have many plaster casts of people who died in Pompeii, but we also have plaster casts of animals and other organic things that were in Pompeii. In this particular picture, this individual, as you can see, is sitting down and he seems to have his hands over his face. He must have been choking on the poisonous gases that were coming out of the volcano and he must have been finding it very hard to breathe. When Mount Vesuvius erupted, the process took over 18 hours. For 18 hours, you had material coming out of the volcano. You had pumice, which were rocks falling on the city. You had poisonous gases and other material coming down. After that, there was a pyroclastic surge, which was like a surge of lava, which just buried everything. But up until then, there was a lot of poisonous materials coming out. And you can see the, the way he would have been when he died. He was choking, couldn't breathe properly, and the poisonous gases were killing him. All of these plaster casts were made by Fiorelli putting plaster into cavities. There were cavities left in hardened ash by the decomposed organic material. Fiorelli poured plaster casts into these cavities, or you might say holes, that were in the ground. And then later he was able to reveal the shapes of bodies of humans and animals that had died during the eruption. He could also reveal food and furniture. This is a plaster cast of a dog which died in the volcanic eruption. 
This is a group of people who died in the volcanic eruption. We can see there seems to be a child here and also another child here and even a child here. And there's a lot of adults who are in the picture. This is a sad picture. It's a tragic picture. You're looking at individuals who have died. But we can also learn so much from it. And this was possibly a family that died in Pompeii 2,000 years ago. And once again, their bodies are sort of bent over. This man is lying on his stomach. They were probably having a lot of trouble breathing because they were consuming all these poisonous gases that would have been coming out of the vol volcano. So it can be a bit upsetting to watch these types of images, but they're, they're so educational as well. And some of these plaster casts actually have skeletons in them as well, or some skeletal remains. So it's not just pure plaster, there's actually some skeleton in some of them. And even the clothes that they might have been wearing tell us so much. For example, some of the plaster casts actually are wearing a belt, or the person who died was wearing a belt. And that shows us that that person would have been a slave. So if we see a plaster cast with a belt, we can tell that person was a slave. So these plaster casts are very interesting, and they tell us so much about life in Pompeii at the time of the eruption. But it, it can also be very haunting and disturbing to look at these images. But it's still a worthwhile practice to look at them.